we just there we go hello and welcome to this edition of the angels and destiny show why is this show called this you may ask so i'll tell you the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish so my guests and i bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present and also i like working with angels and the calmness they bring now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Stimph De Costa. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. If you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, angelic Reiki, angel oracle cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Stimphna Da Costa, who will be talking about how we can create that sense of empowerment from within when there is so much change around us. Now, Dimphna spent over 20 years in corporate, then the city, followed by running her own accountancy business before walking away from it all to pursue the life her heart desired. Now she invested in herself, traveled and studied the most ancient and sacred spiritual practices with some of the most respected teachers, committing to helping others to access the magic within and become the best versions of themselves and to build so aligned lives and businesses to live every single day with abundance. Now, Dimfna is a coach, consultant and mentor working exclusively with ambitious women, predominantly in the UK and US. Those who, like her, suspect there has to be more. Now, she combines esoteric and ancient healing techniques, including shamanic healing, ancient Indian methods, dreaming, breath work, Reiki, sound healing, the magic of ceremony, and so much more. With cutting edge NLP, EFT, nutrition, psychology, psychology and science, and of course, rock solid, no nonsense business skills, which is the perfect combination to empower women to manifest the life they truly desire and to create the business of their dreams. Now with testimonials such as, I've experienced the powerful change that working with Dymphna can instigate in various aspects of my life, including my business. She uses a mixture of modern business techniques as well as incorporating those of a more healing and spiritual nature to provide the perfect catalyst for this transformational work. And I can't even put into words that Dymphna's transformational work has done for me, set me on a path to complete healing of mind, body and soul. And I found happiness that I now enjoy today. None of this would have happened without mm -hmm. her wisdom, passion. So without further delay, hello Dymphna, <laughs> welcome to the Angels Destiny Show. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Hi Ray, yeah, I'm really good. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really looking forward to it. Brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this show, which is always very helpful, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Dymphna and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So Dymphna, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can be empowered from within? Brilliant. Yeah, no, I will. Thank you. Um, so I suppose my journey, I'll start from you know, many years ago when I first started working, and I kind of think that, you know, I kind of came out of university and I'd done this degree in English history and politics and realised that unless I was to be a teacher <laughs> or something along those similar lines, that um, I needed to sort of like, I suppose, face a bit of reality. Or well, that's what I thought at the time, you know. So I got a job in an accounts department and I thought, okay, I'm gonna to study to be a chartered accountant because, you know, we kind of not sucked in because at the time it felt really good. And, you know, I don't have no regrets about anything, nor I feel, should we really? Um, so I started studying while I was working and basically worked my way up, worked for fantastic companies, loved working in the planning and implementation teams. But I kind of thought to myself, there was always, it was kind of, 
the, the, how I describe it is kind of wanting an answer to a question, but not yeah. knowing what the question is. Do you know what I mean? Where yes. So you can't really articulate it. It's almost as if something's missing, but it's not that obvious as that. It just you just kind of think, well, what is it all about? You know, my life's really good, but what, what's the what's the purpose? So I suppose it was like. You know, and we don't always need to have a purpose. We can just simply be. But I suppose because I wasn't content to just simply be and I was looking for this purpose, I felt like I needed to know what this was. Um, so I then moved across and I worked in the city as an equities analyst. So all the while I was just thinking, tick, 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 my career is, you know, this is fantastic. I've got like a dream job that I never thought I'd, I'd land, basically. Um, and then I enjoyed that loved it um kind of still thought you know <laughs> why are we doing all of this you know and I suppose I kind of went in just before the recession 2007 and so my plan had only been to work in that environment for like a short amount of time and hopefully you know work hard get my bonuses and then do something else yeah. and um but it wasn't the same after the recession anyway so I kept my job that was absolutely fine but I kind of thought, you know, actually, let's make let's do something different. So I set up my own accountancy practice and, and partly as well, because eventually I knew that I wanted to have a family. And I just thought I'm, I don't really want to be going in it, you know, leaving the house at half past five, you know, quarter to six and all that kind of stuff. And I could see other women doing that. And, you know, it just became an acceptable norm. You know, sometimes you get women who are breastfeeding, like going to the bathrooms and like, you know, you know sort of like pumping their their breast milk so, and giving it to the nanny and sort of like yeah. you know and I just think oh my goodness I don't want to do that I'd want to just you know if I have a family I want to be there but I also want something sort of like challenging outside of that too and so I set up my own accountancy practice and I and I really loved it and it was almost like I was getting another step closer to to finding all of this out and along at the similar time as well I began my spiritual journey in the sense that I had conversations with people. So but before this point, I didn't, you know, if someone said like, you know, chakras, I'd be like, oh, OK, I don't really, you know, don't really understand. You know, I don't believe in all of that kind of thing, you know, let alone say anything else, you know. So I worked with a coach, a spiritual coach, and I didn't know why, because I had no idea of anything outside, you know, my mat more material life, you know, but I just felt called to. And then I sort of started to discover, you know, about energy, how it, you know, how it works and, and all those magical things. And for me, it was like those early days in 2011, it was like, like 2010, 2011, it was like Christmas Day every day because I was just discovering something new or, I'd, you know, like find out about clairaudience or clairvoyance or, you know, all of those kind of things and like guides and angels and you know, and so it was wonderful, it was magical. And I remember those days where you just thought, oh, you know, thank goodness, yes, there is something else and it's yeah. this. And I don't need to know everything about this, but at least I know that there's something else and, and that and it all, you know, and I don't need to know everything right now and it will all work out beautifully. And I just also learned to follow my instinct, that intuition and have trust and faith as well. So it was sort of, all these magical external things like you know gifts and guides and, but also then an understanding of myself and think okay you know I trust myself I know that you know I'm I don't need to know the answer but I need you know I know the next step on my journey and the next step after you know this and I'll know the next step after that and I don't need to know everything right now and also you know about manifestation and creation and that type of thing so um I carried on with my accountancy practice whilst I also developed went on my spiritual journey and I just learned I just relearn I remembered things from before I worked with people that I was drawn to so you know I'd have, I'd had a couple of fantastic fantastic Reiki master teachers and I worked with a um a rescue medium and you know all of these types of things and then I also did my shamanic practitioner training which took a few years and I had to, had to undergo all the different initiations which you know and I think for me it's that balance so all along that spiritual journey it's that balance of understanding self 
um, you know, the shadow, the ego, the balance between the masculine and the feminine, the inner child, all of that type, of, you know, understanding myself yeah. better. And then the external as well. So like I've mentioned, you know, our guides, our ancestors, you know, all the magical things we can tap into and all that kind of stuff. And um, I had a little girl and I had her later on. So and I waited, I sort of was continuing all my learning and, you know, training and talking to different people and just like filling up my toolkit. And then when she started school, I sort of started, um, you know, talking about this. And I had a few clients, you know, coaching clients, but I never advertised prior to that. And so I sort of thought I'm going all out and um, going to start marketing it, talking about it and, you know, doing, you know, e-courses, planning retreats, all that type of thing which I had done before, but it was very sort of on the quiet because I didn't, yeah. you know, I had a little girl and I want to spend time with her. So it was when I chose to do things like that because I also had my accountancy practice. So, um, yeah, and then that was in 2019. So it, everything was crystallising and then COVID came along. And surprisingly, though, when it came along, I thought, okay, it's fine because I'll just sort of prepare things in the background. I'll write my e-courses or I'll plan you know what I'm going to do but it I actually ended up being really busy and women approaching me and asking to work with me because of all the connections I'd made and you know I suppose the networking I'd done um so I have been really busy so working like one-to-one -one and I've got e-courses and things like that so but now I suppose as we're coming out of this you know it's getting that clarity sort of you know okay I'm going to work on a one-to-one -one basis I'm going to have e-courses I'm going to work do group work and I'm planning retreats so you know so it's it's been really good and I've been really busy so that's great um so I suppose that's my journey in it's, a nutshell it's it's a busy journey it um, <laughs> and then to, you know obviously it wasn't a it wasn't a quick journey it, it was quite a, a prolonged journey really yeah exactly um, but it's all perfect you know because I kind of think if I hadn't have spent all that time working in the city, I wouldn't be able to do the part that, you know, I suppose my business is a three pronged approach. It's like the ancient esoteric healing techniques to where we gain the understanding of ourselves, you know, so we understand what triggers us and we can trace it back to, you know, the wound or the healing that needs to be done so that we become more of ourselves, you know, that we can release that, um, so you know I suppose for example if someone thinks oh I don't have, I'm not confident to do this well where's that feeling coming from you know and then tracing it back and thinking, okay it's because of something that happened to you when you were younger or it's something that someone said to you and you've subconsciously taken that in let's see if we can release that um as well as like the more modern techniques you know the nutrition the EFT that type yeah. of stuff and the science of energy healing but then the practical business skills because I think we do need to be grounded you know as well as having you know it's that balance isn't it and I think for me a key thing is the balance yeah 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 it's it's, to it's totally got, got to be a balance grounding is such a big thing as well I mean people that know me my clients always go oh you always talk about ground and it's like <laughs> yeah that is the most important thing I know people think yeah, it, it, it's great to sort of like be up here and, yeah. you know, doing this spiritual work, doing that. Sort of, <laughs> unless you're grounded and bring it into reality here, you're not going to be helping people down here because <laughs> they won't get it. Yes. And that's that is the thing. But I do feel that people more and more. And I don't know. If, I mean, I'm sh I'd love to know what you think about this as well, that people are becoming more and more open, even, you know, even in a business sense, people want to. We say shamanic, but that, that understanding of self, what's stopping, what's the difference between someone that succeeds in, in the way they want to and another person that doesn't? And it's, there's no, you know, we, they've got a similar skill set. What's the difference? And that's like that inner work that we need to do in order to then be able to tap into that. Yeah, no, I've definitely noticed that more people are kind of like, receptive you know and, and doing doing this show as well you know I've I've kind of like come across a lot more people that are going oh so so that's what you know what what it's all about that that kind of thing you know I mean I've been talking about 
angels and unicorns and everything Wonderful. else for years and years and years. <laughs> and I and you know, and I've never cared who I've 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 spoken to. You know, I've I've you know, I've I've been been in places where I've started <laughs> talking about it. You know, and you can see that someone's sort of like going. <laughs> you know, what's going on? And that, but I've, it's never it's never worried me, and I've never really had any negativity back from it. But I think that's probably because I was so passionate about it that yeah. if there was, I wouldn't have noticed it. Um, but I do know when um, I first started working with with clients, they would say, oh, "I don't really talk about it because I get these really negative comments," and I'm thinking, oh, "I've never got negative comments." No. But, but it's changed and more and more people now especially my clients are able to talk about it in you know corporate businesses um and everything you know I do future life progression you know and that's going into business now you know CEOs are using (laughs) it to um you know for to see whether they're going to employ people what the business trends are to be ahead of their competitors so it's starting to get into everywhere now, which is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I'm absolutely, yeah, future life, I can see that definitely, like, you know, and I think it's good that people are starting to tap into that part of themselves, mm. enabling themselves to be able to see where they're going to be. And also it gives that sense of confidence, doesn't it? That belief. Yeah, <laughs> and that magic of empowerment within them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, 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 so talk, so talk about, so, so tell us about the, our, um, of obviously, our, um, the magic of empowerment inside, you know, that's within us. Mm. You know, how, how do, how do we tap into it? How can we tap into it? <laughs> I'm sure you know. <laughs> I know, but. Of course, your way of doing it, I have my way of doing it, which is absolutely brilliant because it means more people will actually want to do it. Yeah, exactly. And I think it all started, I mean, I've always been a bit, I've been like this. I see it in my little girl, actually, as an example. So she's only six, but for a long time, she's always been like quietly confident. And I'm not saying that she's, so she always just knows what she wants. She's sort of centered within. She's not at home. She's different to school, but like she's not at school, like loud or anything like that, or really, really confident. At home, she, you know, she obviously is because it's a familiar surrounding, but she's always got that sense of, you know, I'm okay, mummy, this is what I want to do. This is what I like. No, I want to do this. No, I really want to, I, yeah, I want to do that. And it, it's that sense of self, you know, knowing what they're all, you know, what, what she's about. And I think, you know, I sort of see that in her. But when I really started to more obviously talk about it, I think when we went into lockdown, and I think there was so much stuff going on inside, and I think outside, sorry, that I did a couple of talks where I think the title was lockdown, you know, something like um, empowerment is an inside job, basically. So of course, we know that to the greater extent that what what's going on on outside is you know, in our immediate surroundings is a reflection of what's going on inside because it's our perception, our reality. And so, you know, I sort of sort of created this approach. So it was like the inner work, to have that inner sense of empowerment to start with yourself. So people often talk about morning routines. It doesn't matter if you don't do it in the morning, whatever it is that you want to do to feel more like yourself, whether that's meditate, whether that's, you know, if you like, blessing the day ahead whatever it is whether it's spiritual or or not if it's doing your exercise or whatever um feeding the mind body and soul so sometimes people do three you know three things one for the mind one for the body one for the soul I suppose it's doing that in the morning because I tend to find if I don't it never happens so I suppose if we get up and we do it it's done it's not necessarily about being you know so holier than now that we get up really early and that's what we do it's just that it's a done deal sort of thing so I suppose it's starting off with the sense of empowerment that you can I mean controlling anything is an illusion anyway but you have that sense of control over your day you know so you feed your mind body and soul first thing and I often talk about this you know you can define who you want to be so at the start of the day you know we can incorporate this okay today I'm going to be totally I'm going to totally boss it in this business meeting and be a fantastic business and I'm going to be like you know the best mum that I can you know the best partner I'm going to do everything to the best 
of my ability, you know, and, you know, be the highest version of myself. And then tapping into, you know, things that you want to enjoy. So this is almost like tapping into our feminine energy and making sure, you know, thinking, okay, what three things do I want to enjoy today and setting that intention, you know, and at least three things. I mean, if you can't find three, then one, but that could just mean like having your favorite cup of tea and your favorite cup by your favorite spot in your house. You know, it doesn't have to mean spending, going out and spending a load of money or anything like that. And I think that sort of, gets us in the space where we open to receiving. So I suppose this to, this sort of like edges into the manifestation type energy that, you know, we're ready to receive. So we we kind of like we want to receive, we are receiving because we're giving ourselves things to be, you know, that we're enjoying. So our energy is we're open to receiving. And so therefore the universe is going to give us more because we're in that space of receiving and, you know, our minds and our soul are of that energy so we get that reflected yeah. back and then okay I guess it's then defining okay one thing or three things that need to be done that day so going into our masculine energy but inspired action mode so okay right I've definitely got to um you know um prepare for that meet my client meeting tomorrow I have got to um write that blog I've got to go and get my daughter's school shoes, whatever it is, so that we don't get overwhelmed. We pick the three things that we know need to be done. And then obviously we do more, but it's that sense of coming from being able to take inspired action as opposed to overwhelmed and, you know, fighting fires. Yeah. And then feeling as if we haven't done anything that's sort of, you know, added any value or helped us along our journey. Um, so that's kind of a really nice way to start off the day and it doesn't take very long and then for me it's like having gratitude yeah for the sake of it anyway but also because then we have more things to be grateful for and sometimes it's just changing our perspective you know it's sort of increasing our energetic frequency you know we're vibrating at a higher level and then letting go as well these things I tend to do like more towards the end of the day but as you as we do it, we can do it as we're going along, but letting go of what doesn't serve us. So, you know, not holding on to things, just letting them go so they don't start impacting and affecting us even more. And so that sort of starting with ourselves, that sort of sense of empowerment from within, that it doesn't matter there's a lockdown. We still have that sense of empowerment within ourselves regardless because we're doing all these things and we know that, ultimately controlling the external is just an illusion but we can control the way we think and feel and how we behave and so we have empowerment over that and then we can sort of like go to our family and then the next layer out the local community and then doing stuff for the environment you know but starting from within and I heard a wonderful quote from someone recently and they said you know how we treat our bodies is actually how we're treating the environment And it's quite an interesting, and I thought, "Mm, is it? And I thought about it and I thought, well, yeah, because if we don't respect our bodies and we're, you know, perhaps not eating well or not doing these things that we need to do, then how are we going to look after the environment? It's kind of, it's quite, I did sort of, I did sort of have a little think, okay, what do I feel about that? Um, But yes, that's it, basically. That's having that sense of empowerment from within. So yeah that's 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 beautiful yeah and and it is kind of like a routine but it doesn't have to be a routine right um of, on 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 a daily basis which i think is absolutely brilliant and i love the way you were talking earlier about your daughter as well and there are a lot of children now being born who have that sense of identity um of of being here being fully grounded knowing what they want and what what they don't want and it's great that there are more people that are spiritually aware, especially adults, that these children are being born to so that they're not, Mm. the children aren't being suppressed and being, you know, being moulded into what society thinks they should be rather than allowing them to be who they are meant to be. Yeah, it's, yes, that's so true. And you do, you you kind of see it. So quite often I will, so for example, like um, our dog, my dog, died last year um and she at first wasn't particularly 
bothered about it and I thought oh my goodness why isn't she bothered about it <laughs> if I got a child that's can't be emotional and um so I think it was just an age thing and then it's only literally six months later that it started to really she's like really sad about it now and um but I think I do like at the time I was like okay look it's okay because Nala's still around but you just can't see her and um but then she was telling her friends at school that, that, that she still had a dog and like they were we were doing a couple of play dates you know in that time that we could and um in the garden and they were like all you know my child doesn't like dogs I know you've got a dog I said I haven't got a dog and then I realized that she'd been saying oh yeah my dog walks around and I can hear my dog and I sort of thought okay I said look yeah that's exactly right but we just have to be mindful that not everyone else understands it the same way as us and so I'm quite open with her about you know things yeah. and energy and that type of thing and but I also have to say, you know, we just have not everyone will see it from our point of view because they're just not aware of it. So, you know, I sort of <laughs> highlight what she can talk about <laughs> at school and, and then what, what 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 she can't. But she's, you know, very much I'm quite open with what I do. Like around the house, there's crystals, you know, I've got a broomstick, a decorative broomstick in the corner of the living room. And like, I've got my shamanic drum and my yeah. singing, you know, so she, this all stuff around that she's kind of aware of. And yeah, I think all we can do is just give them the chance to be who they, they are. And I think it's just give her a good, we can give them a good foundation, but ultimately what happens after that is down to them. And it's not yeah. getting too attached to their future because that's their future. Yeah, yeah, that's such wise words. Um, it, it is, yeah, we're not our children. No, and I think uh, many people, you know, I think, uh, you know, when I think look back to my childhood, my mum, you know, I think it's changing. People mm. are, you know, becoming, it's a different way of, I think that there are going to be exceptions to the rule for yeah. sure, but I think in general things are changing with parenting you know and allowing kids to be who they want to be and that kind of thing yeah yeah which is which is absolutely brilliant because they are the next generation and they are bringing their wisdom and their knowledge mm -hmm. um in and that's going to be important in the, in the future um because they get the, you know because they've got the ideas and the innovations that are actually going to make this our own world a better place to live in um, yeah. when, when we let them come out with with their ideas um and to actually actually be themselves so if um you know so so, so so say say um you know someone says okay so this morning um i'm going to uh set my intentions for the day um that you know this is you know this is how you know how i want how or how i want my day to be etc what happens if that day doesn't go the way they planned you know how do they how come back from that how do they come back from that and they'll go do you know something well, that meeting was absolute crap. It didn't go, um, you know, it didn't go as, as well as what I intended to do. Or, oh, I didn't get that, um, that um, article wasn't as popular. Or, you, you know, how, 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 how would you come back from that if you set that intention with all your heart thinking, yeah, this is what my intention is for the day. It's going to be a beautiful day and your day's not. Yeah, sure. And I think, so the thing is the letting go piece is, is one element of it and letting go of that and kind of dusting yourself off and there's ways people do things in, in different ways you can just do it mentally people you know have cold showers or people like I know a lady that basically puts her feet in ice cold water and that's a way of letting go and I'm sure she would you know it's not really cold then it's like <laughs> yeah exactly and um so letting go and we can do that mentally anyway we can just sort of dust it on it okay but also it's thinking that if things didn't go the way that you wanted them to, it's kind. Of, it could be that it wasn't meant to be, and that for whatever reason that meeting didn't do, it didn't go well because something else is coming along. Like for example, you know, if you have a meeting with a client, potential client, and it didn't go very well, well maybe you're not meant to work with that person. Maybe they're not ready for you yet. Maybe that person, you know, is going to be more effort than you need it's not going to be the right client for you it's going to be you know not a great experience or so you know things aren't meant to be and that something better is around the corner or it's also there could be a lesson learned you know so for example if you think right I'm going into 
I want because that's the inspired action piece I feel because okay right so I've got this presentation I want it to be good I want to get that client you could go and do a fantastic presentation the client might be disagreeable the potential client and so therefore it's not meant to be but it might be that you don't prepare so you know we when it's you know when we're trying to create and manifest things in our life and create that abundance you know we have to be that energy but we there's that taking inspired action piece as well so maybe there's a lesson learned okay my lesson is that maybe next time I'll be better prepared you know and all right it's fine it's meant to be that I didn't get this but I was supposed to learn this lesson you know but it's always like keeping off energy not toxic positivity you know but it's thinking okay I, I don't feel that great expressing that and thinking okay and then trying to get on the upward spiral again yeah because if we start going downwards it's really easy to keep going and finding other things so it's trying to get back up to like good vibrations <laughs> yeah we, which could as you said be be the gratitude you know um yeah you might have had a really bad meeting but you got when you got home you got a parking space yeah so right. the letting go and the gratefulness about it you know or it might be that the next day you get a call and suddenly you get a client that totally takes up all of your time so therefore that was the client you were supposed to get yeah yeah it, yeah it's it's definitely a way of reframing how things actually look and happen when 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 they yeah. do happen when they do happen to you you know I, I can remember years ago um i wanted to buy um i was i was looking for a flat to buy and I'd seen this two bedroom flat and I fell in love with it. And it was like, oh my God, you know, this is going to be the best thing ever. And then in those days, you got gazumped. And basically, the estate agent had somebody, a friend mm. of theirs that they wanted, and I lost out on that flat. And I was really sort of like heartbroken about it yeah. because it's like, you know, I'd been planning where everything was going to be. But then I found a one bedroom flat on the same, in the same area. And when I went to sell the flat, no, so when I, I went to buy that flat, we'd had a recession. So I got it, I got my flat at a reduced mm. rate. So the recession hadn't quite happened when I was looking at the two bedroom flat. When I looked okay. at the one bedroom flat, the recession had happened. And when I went to sell the flat, it actually made more for me than the two bedroom would have done. Brilliant. Yeah. And, that, you know, and that was, I wasn't meant, that there was a reason why I didn't get that two, two, mm. bed, two bedroom flat, because in the long term, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, um, you know, made, made the money to be able to buy a house. Mm, exactly. And that's the thing, isn't it? Especially with things like buying with them, the housing market, that sometimes that is the only way you can look at it, because you get so emotionally involved in it it's a lot of emotions because it's where you're going to live you imagine living there where you're going to put things um but that's definitely a good definitely a good approach for sure yeah definitely and you can you can do that with every area of your life even if it doesn't feel like it at the time yeah exactly right and that is it isn't it it's about sort of deciding that's how you're going to do things and you can kind of see how freeing it's going to be for you because then we don't waste our like precious energy and all the negative feelings and emotions, we can move on and, and sort of continue on our journey. You know, of course, we have to feel those feelings, otherwise we're not going to be present. But it's enabling us then to, to carry on, because if we go down that negative path, unfortunately, what happens is that we just draw in more things to feel negative about. And you can, you know, you know what it's like every day where you think, right, I'm just going to be happy, you know, say hello to us. And then you just, you know, you attract more and more goodness but if you are in a really bad mood then you just you know you you know things just happen that put you in a worse mood you know <laughs> there's no yeah. point yeah there, there's no point you know and and even you know people like me and Infna, you know who have been working with stuff for ages we still have those days those moments Definitely. where we kind of like pull ourselves to and go damn why why did i do that okay let's try and um yeah, for me, it's like in the morning getting when I take my little one to school, so I have to be really mindful. So, so and not just get up, just be, get ready. So I've got lots of time. 
because then it's like you know you end up having not enough time they end up being really grumpy and then you just think well I don't want to be grumpy you know about all of this so yeah I do have to catch myself and think right yeah I've got to make sure I've got enough time to do what I need to do yeah yeah so yeah so even if you've been doing fruit spiritual stuff for a long long time <laughs> it can you know we're human <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely yeah, we, we're definitely human, 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 and we can relate. Um, so as you know, I do um, guided meditations, angelical card readings. And each week, I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do. Um, so Dinfna, would you like me to do an angel oracle card reading or a guided meditation for you and those watching? I'd love a reading, please. Why not? And funny enough, I have the cards right in front of me. <laughs> How amazing is that? So as uh, some of you will know, when I do card readings, I don't predict the future with the cards. When I do the cards, it's for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time, which may sound a bit contradictory because obviously I do past life regression where we work with the past. But we clear the past so, past, past so we can be in the present. And when I work with the future, yes, we know what's happening in the future. But we bring that back to the present so we're not worried and we're fully in the present. So let's give the cards click, click, quick cleanse and the best. God, I'm really getting my, my teeth there. <laughs> I to, I'll probably have to take them out and put them back in again. Okay, <laughs> so what does Stymphna and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Stymphna and everybody who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Perfect. Infinite abundance. Abundance is pouring into your life. Wonderful. <laughs> there we go. We couldn't have had a more perfect card. <laughs> absolutely. Um, absolutely perfect card. So, so yes, you know, there is abundance actually really pouring into, into our life at the moment. You just have to be that open vessel, um, you know, have that blanket, your skirts, your arms out to actually... Okay, I'm here ready. Bring that abundance in because it's coming down, but you have to be open and ready and ready for it. Um, so, so Dinfna, what you're doing now, you know, is absolutely brilliant because that abundance is actually, you know, um, you know, coming to you if, it, if it's not already. And everyone who's watching this, again, you know, be the open vessel allow yourself to receive that abundance which is there and wants to come in for you um Perfect. so thank you yeah um that's that's a, that's a beautiful card to come out i do love that mm -hmm. um so dinfna do you have any thoughts or words of wisdom to leave our viewers i suppose what did i write down earlier yeah so i suppose pretty much what we've been talking about that you know, we don't really know how this year is going to pan out, you know, or next year. And, you know, we can't, and even if it isn't that, we can't really control what's going on outside us, but we can get that sense of empowerment and abundance from within. So I use the word empowerment, but also it's abundance too. You know, when we do all these things for ourselves, we feel like we're abundant, We, you know, that we have all these, um, we're having an abundant experience, you know, um, and I, you know, what's going on outside and how you perceive it is what's, is, it, is a reflection of what's going on inside. So if we can sort of become empowered within ourselves and quietly confident as we sort of like continue on our journey, then that will kind of extend to our external world. And that would be what I would say. Absolutely perfect words. So thank you very much for thank that. You. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom that Dinfna has given you will help you further on your journey. So Dinfna, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Okay, yeah. So I will um, give you my email address. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and I'll give you my website details as well, because I you know, I often post blogs and I have a mailing list too where I put out lots of tips and stories and inspirational things. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and I think most people can find you under Dinfna de Costa anyway, <laughs> yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Uh, and that, it's a double D logo. Yes. <laughs> Thank
thank not you. Not that I've been stalking or anything like that. Just put my hands <laughs> up to that. Um, I don't but, mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I will put uh, um, I will put all the uh, um, links in the comments so that you can just literally click on on those links and go straight to um, any of uh, Dinfler's social media or contact details. And of course, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your life purpose and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you. So please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to find out more about each other and whether I can actually help you on your journey. And of course, the Angel Wings membership community is there if you want to join, where you get a chance to grow with angels, ascended masters, archangels, gods, goddesses, angel oracle cards, and of course, the beautiful people within the um, membership to help you spread your wings and soar. And of course, if you sign up to the my weekly newsletter, you get a free gift or a couple of gifts. Um, on there and of course do look out for the retreats um, that I'm running in Glastonbury and of course the angelic Reiki training so thank you everyone so much for watching and thank you Dinfina for being a wonderful guest mm -hmm. thank you and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and of course if you are watching this on YouTube please do, su do subscribe to my channel. Every subscription to my channel really helps me. And of course, do hit that bell to be notified when the show goes live and to see all the guided meditations and everything else I post on YouTube. And of course, I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. So thank you, Dimfna, and thank you everyone for watching and see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.